Gentlemen, start your engines. McDonald's involvement in the NASCAR Cup Series dates back nearly 50 years, starting with a few one-off sponsorships at Riverside International Raceway. Benny Parsons is the first recorded driver to carry the company on his car in 1973 while driving the number 72 Chevrolet for L.W. DeWitt. It would be nearly four years until the company reappeared, doing so with Richard Childress and his team on four separate occasions between 1977 and 1981. However, the familiar red and yellow colors we've all grown accustomed to were not showcased on the three car. It was all white. It wasn't until 1993 that McDonald's would sponsor a team for the full schedule, joining forces with Hutt Strickland and his Junior Johnson-owned team. The team got off to a hot start, finishing fourth in the season-opening Daytona 500, but found minimal success after, as Strickland finished 24th in points while failing to collect another top-five finish. For the 1994 season, the sponsor stuck with the legendary Johnson team, but Berwick, Pennsylvania's Jimmy Spencer would climb behind the wheel of the number 27 Ford. The early season results were not much different. After 14 races, the team sat 26 in points and again had only one top five finish. But on July 2nd, 1994, fortune struck and as ESPN's Bob Jenkins famously declared, Jimmy Spencer wins it. It being the 1994 Pepsi 400 from Daytona International Speedway. Spencer fought off a hard-charging Ernie Irvin in a legendary last lap duel to grab his first Winston Cup victory, as well as the first for the Golden Arches. Just three races later in the Die Hard 500, Spencer did it again, this time holding off teammate Bill Elliott to bring home the checkers. But the luck ended there for the number 27 team. Over the next six races, the team finished 43rd, 20th, failed to qualify at Bristol, followed by 37th, 35th, and 39th. Spencer finished outside the top 15 in each of the season's final 12 events and would exit the ride entering 1995. The luck also ran out for McDonald's. Despite continuing in the sport on and off for the next 25 plus years, the July 24, 1994 victory at Talladega remains the last time the sponsor reached victory lane in the Cup Series. The Johnson team not only lost Spencer, but their top driver as well, Dawsonville's awesome Bill Elliott. To add insult to injury, Elliott took team sponsor McDonald's along with him as he teamed up with Charles Hardy to start his own team. The owners would campaign the new number 94 Ford for the 1995 season and beyond. Elliott was still one of the best drivers in the sport, narrowly losing the championship just two years prior and winning an astounding 40 races over the previous 12 seasons. Many expected his success to continue with a fresh start and a supportive sponsorship. The 1995 season had everything but a victory for the team. Elliott wheeled the 94 car to an 8th place result in the season standings while collecting 2 poles, 4 top 5s, and 11 top 10s. Entering 1996, the team was poised to grab that elusive first victory, but unfortunately, fate had other plans. At the Winston Select 500, Elliott was involved in a frightening airborne crash. While the McDonald's Ford did not roll over, the impact of its landing left the driver injured. Young Todd Bodine would man the wheel while the owner driver recovered from his injuries and posted respectable results with a best finish of 10th at Pocono. The rest of the season was a disappointment, with the returning Elliott failing to capture a single top 5 finish. 1997 saw Elliott return to form as he started off the season with a 4th place finish in the Daytona 500. Despite solid top 10 runs throughout the season, a victory still eluded the veteran. The closest the driver came was a 2nd place in the 1997 Miller 400, where the trophy went to an emotional Ernie Irvin. Another shot for the checkered flag fell just short in August during the Mountain Dew Southern 500, where he led 181 laps en route to a 4th place result. The next three seasons were filled with disappointment for the aging champion. From 1998 to 2000, Elliott only scored four total top fives and 14 top tens. He never finished above 18th in the standings in any of those seasons. Elliott's tenure in the McDonald's sponsored ride had more disappointments than success. In six seasons, he had 14 top fives, which was the same amount he had with Junior Johnson's team in 1992 alone. 
the Dawsonville driver would go on to win four races with Ray Everham and his new Dodge operation, proving he still had plenty left in the tank. The Golden Arches would again join a new team, this time the second cup car for Cal Wells. Andy Houston would pilot the number 96 Ford, which debuted for a short five race run in 2000. Houston had little success with the new team, making only 17 events while failing to qualify for another eight. He had a best finish of 17th at Martinsville, compiled an astounding nine finishes of 38th or worse, including three consecutive last place efforts at Daytona, Chicago, Indianapolis. After the struggles with Houston, McDonald's took a few years off in the Cup Series. They returned in 2004 and until 2009 sponsored cars part-time for Ray Evernham and eventually Richard Petty Motorsports. Bill Elliott, Casey Kane, Elliott Sadler, AJ Allmendinger, and Reed Sorensen all took their turns representing the company, but all failed to capture even a top five finish. The following season, McDonald's joined Jamie McMurray at Earnhardt Ganassi Racing and have been a sponsor with the now Chip Ganassi Racing team ever since. McMurray won four races during his tenure with the team, but unfortunately none came with the company's famous logo on the hood. Kyle Larson was also sponsored by McDonald's for a few races, and many thought this would be the driver to finally get them back into victory lane. He came close several times, including the 2018 Food City 500, where he led 200 laps before eventually finishing second to Kyle Busch. Both McMurray and Larson ended their tenure with Ganassi, having claimed several victories, but all with different primary sponsors. McDonald stayed with Ganassi through the release of Larson and sponsored several races for former champion Matt Kenseth in 2020. Kenseth almost shocked the NASCAR world at Indianapolis when he challenged late, but like many drivers before him, came up just short and finished second to race winner Kevin Harvick. Bubba Wallace also wheeled a McDonald's ride for a few races in the number 43 for Richard Petty with minimal results. Heading into 2021, many believe that McDonald's is in its best position yet to cross the finish line and enter victory lane for the first time in over 25 years. The company will again sponsor Wallace, this time with the new Denny Hamlin Michael Jordan owned 2311 racing, as well as Ross Chastain. Whether it simply be bad luck or some kind of otherworldly curse, it's no doubt surprising that the red and yellow colors of America's favorite fast food restaurant has not had more success. Several race winning and even championship winning drivers have tried and failed to do what Jimmy Spencer did on that summer day in 1994. Only time will tell if Ross Chastain, Bubba Wallace, or somebody else will be able to break the streak and finally exclaim in victory lane, I'm loving it.